a short video today. I was at the thrift store. They're still technically closed, but every Friday for four hours a day, they let people come in. And uh, I was in there today during my lunch hour at work, and they had a box full of some really old cassettes, and I found some real gems. I bought all the cassettes you see here, as well as this case for them to go in because my desktop uh, cassette drawer thing is out of space for these tapes. But I, I found some really cool recordable tapes here. Let's start off with uh, these two. These are from the early 70s. BASF Chrome Dioxide SM. BASF is one of my favorite brands of magnetic tape. Really cool cassette shell design. Even got some uh, German on here. That's how old these are. Show you the cassette itself. So one of them's a normal chrome dioxide. This one's a chrome dioxide super. So the highest grade version. But look at that, huh? What a cool looking cassette. And the SM stands for security mechanism. And I think that might refer to the screws that the case is held together with. Look at this, metal flathead screws holding the case together. Very, very cool. Take a look at this one. So that's a normal chrome dioxide. They uh, appear to, to have used a different type of shell. This one's got a, the super's got a bigger window than the ordinary grade one. That's something BASF often did. They often used a uh, a cassette shell with a bigger window for the higher end versions of a particular series of tape. On the other end of a spectrum, a tape that is not at all revered for its quality, but I couldn't uh, pass up on this, a realistic super tape Chrome 90. So this is a type 2 tape from I think late 70s or early 80s. The realistic super tapes were kind of junk. At least the Type 1s were. Maybe the Type 2s were better. I'm not sure. It all depends on where they got their tape stock from. But, uh, nice tape. Unadulterated. Hasn't been written on. The label's been written on, but I get pretty lucky often these cassette tapes. The, uh, logo side of the of the, uh, insert card here has been unadulterated. It's only the part that's meant to be written on that's been written on so I just flip it over and and you get the full experience of the uh, of the cassette shell graphics that's a really cool tape this one's really special it's a Maxell UL60 from the late 70s and if you've never heard of the UL series of Maxell tapes that's cuz you don't live in Japan this is a Japanese market tape. Somebody bought this tape in Japan and brought it all the way back from Canada. Unfortunately, this one doesn't actually have the UL60 inside. It's got a completely different Maxell cassette, but a good one. A UDXL2. And this is from the mid or late 70s. And these are fantastic tapes, these Maxell XL2 tapes. Very revered. Especially the ones from the 90s. So yeah, kind of a common tape inside of a very uncommon, here in North America, shell. To me, half the fun of these old cassette tapes are just the graphics on the shell. The fun is the graphics on the shell, the graphics on the cassette itself, and finding out how good or bad different cassettes are. It's fun to see how even the bad ones sound. A TDK SA60, I think this is from the late 70s, early 80s. Obviously very revered tapes, the TDK SA series. 
Here's a really old one. This is from the early 70s, earlier mid 70s. It's a Memorex MRX3 Type 1 tape. Very early Memorex tape. They only used the uh, MRX designation for the first 10 years that they were making cassette tapes from the late 60s to the late 70s. Very light colored oxide. Very cool cassette. No graphics on the shell of this one, unfortunately. But the tape itself is cool to find. The Type 2 tapes I use in the uh, IWA ADF uh, 770. The Type 1 tapes I don't have as much use for, but I, I can use them in my Sony TC110. So whenever I find really interesting Type 1 tapes, I'll get them. A Memorex Chrome Bias 2 Super. I think this is from the earlier mid-80s. And another one. Very boring graphics on this. Really no graphics at all. It just had the uh, information on the back. And another one. And another one. <laughs> I got four of them, evidently. Here's one that was kind of a surprising find. I've never seen a Denon cassette before. I knew they existed, but I've never seen one in the wild. A Denon DX460. Now, when I saw the DX4, my heart jumped, because I thought it might be a Type 4, but it's not. It's a Type 1, but a very high-end Type 1. Denon had several grades of Type 1 tape. The DX4 was the highest grade. So it's a premium grade Type 1 tape. Look at the case here. It's actually got Denon molded into the plastic of the shell. And the cassette itself, very attractive, I must say. It's a very nice looking cassette, very classy. And the shell graphics, although basic, are nice looking too. A TDK SA90 from uh, probably late 70s, early 80s. And this one didn't even come in the shell, but it's your ho hum 90s era TDK SA90. Probably some of the best cassette tapes you can get for uh, overall audio quality. So I always grab these when I see them. TDK SAs and Maxell XL2s especially from the 90s, some of the best cassettes you can get and pretty common and cheap to find. So there you go, I got some really cool cassettes here. I got a few high quality Type 2 cassettes. I got some really old vintage Type 2 cassettes and some really cool vintage Type 1 cassettes. So these are gonna be fun to, uh, first of all, listen to. I do listen to what's already on the tape before I overwrite them with my own recordings. But they're gonna be they're gonna be cool to to check out for sure once I get around to it. <laughs>